Hi, Mike Hoffman back again after a long hiatus since last summer. A um, little bit of what uh, has happened since. I've been pretty busy. I actually went back to work. and But now I have been meaning to test some new camera equipment, get some YouTube videos going on energy issues. The first energy issue I'm going to talk about will be solar-powered satellites. There's a company called SolarN. About a year ago, there was a news announcement from Pacific Gas and Electric of an agreement to potentially buy solar energy beam from a satellite that would collect solar energy in outer space, direct it back to Earth by microwaves. Um, for the satellite to stay focused on a particular place, which uh, was in the Central Valley, I think, if I recall correctly. That means a geosynchronous orbit. Well, this concept's been around for a while. And what I've got to say is a bit of a practical cautionary tale. Politically, not technically. Because 1978, when I was a senior at University of Portland just before graduation, we had a graduation dinner for the engineering class. And we had a speaker from Boeing, the head of the solar-powered solar satellites program, came down from Seattle to Portland to talk to us. It was really interesting about being able to use a large-scale uh, system in space, uh, collect the energy, convert it to microwaves, have it beam down and beam down so that it was spread out over hundreds of miles with collecting stations being able to absorb this energy and reconvert it to useful energy. And that the planes flying through the microwaves and the beams would not be affected or birds, etc. at people. Um, but that's not the cautionary part. The cautionary part came when I asked a couple of questions. One was, I said, sounds like you can maybe focus this uh, microwave energy and he said yes and I said how small can you focus it down to and he said oh about a square meter and I said that would be if you did that that would be relatively enough hundreds of megawatts of energy or more uh, in that small space it would act like a hot knife cutting through butter relative to the surface of the earth and yeah that was the case so I asked if uh, he thought that uh, the Soviet Union would let us put up a system like that. Because this was the time of the Cold War. Not that it's changed to this day, but... Uh, and there's other players besides the Soviet Union, China, etc. That might take a bit of offense or umbrage at... Um, us having something that could sit in geosynchronous orbit and direct a energy stream down to the surface of the earth that would cut through solid rock. So he didn't really want to deal with that answer much. Or maybe he said that it was, um, you know, maybe he said that it might be an issue. But I do know that this Boeing program went nowhere. And if my memory's a little less than clear, it's been over 30 years. But I certainly still remember the evening and the event, and think that it might be useful when looking at new technologies of this kind, even to this day. Thanks much. Bye.